Uh, welcome back. So, in the previous lecture, we have seen the ethene oligomerization and we also saw how ethene is produced via oligomerization into different chains of olefins and we have also seen the shock process in detail. So, moving ahead, uh, we now focus on another polymeric monomer that is called the terephthalic acid and the dimethyl terephthalate. So, today's lecture shall focus on the production and processes concerning dimethyl terephthalate and terephthalic acid. So, first what we will do, we will introduce the terephthalic acid and dimethyl terephthalate where they are used, I mean these are primarily the precursors for the manufacture of the polymer called as PET, PET you must have heard polyethylene terephthalate, they are useful you know in used in bottles, cans and several other applications. So, it is another polymer which is widely used. So, the principal step for both this precursor is the conversion of the toluene, toluene is the starting material, conversion of toluene to paratolic acid. So, that is the critical uh, step. So, after that we actually convert them to acid and then ester. So, that is first if we uh, study this conversion to toluic acid then we will be able to understand how the end products that is uh, this DMT and TPA is formed. Then we will look up the process flow sheet for the production of TPA and DMT in the later stages. So, let us first introduce both these monomers. Terephthalic acid and dimethyl terephthalate in short form we will uh, actually refer to them as TPA and DMT respectively. They are monomers for polyethylene terephthalate. These are usually synthesized by the polycondensation with ethyl alcohol. So, if you have ethyl alcohol, you do a polycondensation reaction, you manufacture PET. For the polymer, polymer means for the PET, the it says that acid has a clear advantage over the ester. So, the production of this acid means this TPA I am talking about, the TPA acid production has a clear as a precursor, it has clear advantage over the ester due to the increased yield per kilogram of starting material. So, ester means I am referring to DMT. So, it means that the acid has certain advantages because it has increased yield per kg of the starting material and there is also an elimination of the methanol recovery phase which otherwise would have existed in the ester. The majority of the applications for polyethylene terephthalate PET is in fibers because in the fibers the purity of the monomer is a very important quality, polymer quality. Now, in that case polyester actually scores because see the manufacture of acid is easier because easier means it is having higher amount per kilogram and also there the purification step is negligible, but in terms of purity of the monomer then the ester scores. So, that is what it is written the monomers for the synthesis of polyester are some of the most purest and the most abundant compounds. So, in that case ester is favored over the acid, but the issue is it is difficult to uh, purify because ester is non-volatile, it is insoluble in common solvents and it does not melt but sublimes. So, uh, well in one way we are saying production of acid is easier because it does not have much purification step. On the other side, we see that the ester is the most pure and we need pure monomer because if you have access to pure monomer, you can easily do the reaction, the polymerization reaction. But let us see the reaction mechanism and see what are the factors which affect these. So, the overall these dimethyl terephthal and terephthalic acid, the overall this reaction, this is the overall reaction we have now concentrating. So, how the raw material that is the paraxylene, sorry, paratoline in both the cases are converted into its respective, this is dimethyl terephthalate, they are converted to ester and terephthalic acid is converted to its acid that is TPA which is terephthalic acid. So, but in this although the reaction looks very simple, it goes through the formation of paratolic acid both the reaction. So, that is not mentioned here, but this is the overall reaction. The overall delta H is minus 1305 and it is minus 1360. So, obviously, a higher temperature does not uh, allows, it does not allow a high temperature. So, it has got to a lower temperature. So, these are the polyester where uh, it is commonly used as raw materials it is in polyethylene terephthalate, then polytrimethylene terephthalate, PTT 
and then uh, polybutylene terephthalate PBT. So, you know these are uh, very well known polymers and uh, even though nowadays they are not, uh, they are uh, many efforts have been underway to replace it with biopolymers. So, that is also a part of our uh, this course, we will be taking up this in module 6. So, let us introduce first to TPA and DMT. So, this both TAP and DMT as in the previous slide, they are obtained from paraxylene, the starting material. Simplest is process is to just oxidize paraxylene to yield paratoilic acid. The paratoilic acid is given in this formula. This is the first step, oxidation of paratoilin to paratoilic acid. Further oxidation to TPA. So, this particular compound that is paratoilic acid needs to be oxidized further to produce TPA is not possible because the reaction is extremely slow due to the strong stability of the paratoilic acid. So, it means I cannot go ahead with the oxidation process. So, if I cannot go, what do I do? I use a strong oxidant or oxidizer. So, what is the oxidizer? Here used it is nitric acid, which is a very potent oxidant. But the resultant product will have significant levels of contaminants, but it may have contaminants in it. So, it may not be allowed to use in that case. So, the then once it produces that paratolic acid, the conversion of this acid in the equivalent methyl ester is formed. That is the acid then converts back to the paratolic acid then converts to this equivalent ester that is methyl ester that is DMT. Thereafter, we purify this through vacuum distillation and crystallization. So, the overall reaction for the production of para, this uh, terephthalic acid is this. So, you have paratoline, you have nitric acid, strong oxidizer, you form the terephthalic acid with H2O and NO. So, this the heat of reaction is around minus 70 kilojoule per mole. And the overall reaction for the PET synthesis, both this static material that is the monomer, they are used for the manufacture of the polymer which is PET. So, if you see the terephthalic acid is here, it is reacted with ethylene glycol. So, it is a polycondensation reaction. So, you have uh, ethylene glycol reacting with acid to form polymer and water. So, polycondensation means water is condensing out. So, you have this polyethylene terephthalate PET, PET we uh, commonly known. Same thing with this dimethyl terephthalate, you also have ethylene glycol adding up to form polyethylene terephthalate, but with methanol as the bright product. So, this dimethyl terephthalate, uh, you can see a methanol, it requires a methanol separation. So, you need to recover the, you have to remove the methanol. So, now the main uh, issue is the conversion of paratolic acid intermediate. The oxidation of paraxylene occurs via a radical process which is catalyzed by a cobalt acetate or a cobalt naphthenate. Okay. So, the oxidation of this paraxylene occurs via a radical process which is through this catalyst. So, now we are, since we are studying this catalysis part in this module, so that is why the catalyst comes into the picture. But the issue is oxidation stops due to the great stability of paratoilic acid. So, how do we do it? The oxidation of paratoilin. The one technique I will discuss here two techniques. First technique, one technique is to esterify. So, even if you have catalyst, still one way technique they found out was to esterify toilic acid with methanol to produce the rapidly oxidizable paratoilin toilet. So, it means if you convert paraxylene to paratolic acid through this catalyst, then the reaction does not proceed. What you do is you add methanol, you add methanol to paratolic acid and convert to its respective ester. So, respective ester, this particular reaction from paratolic acid to the ester is rapidly oxidizable, it converts to ester without a catalyst. So, this proceeds without a catalyst, esterification proceeds in the liquid phase to form paramethyl toilet remember this particular step. So, combining what we do, we combine oxidation in the air and then esterification, then again you oxidize and then again you do esterification to form and create DMT. This process is called the Witten process, W I T T E N. So, in this process, what happens is Paraxylene will undergo a set of alternative reactions, four alternate oxidation esterification reaction. So, what, what is the process? Paraxylene. So, this is oxidation, then again esterification, then again oxidization, 
finally esterification. So, oxidation, esterification, oxidation, esterification. So, this is the process. So, I will show the what are the products which are formed into the next slide. So, this is the written process. So, see now you have para xylene here. Okay. So, you do oxidation to form paratolic acid. The, even if you do not add methanol, the reaction stops here. It is very stable paratolic acid. So, what you do, the first process you add methanol to it. If you add methanol to it, it will lose a molecule of water and form the ester. It is called paramethyltolate. So, this paratolic acid to paramethyltolate converts without a catalyst. So, it is a non-catalytic process. Then again oxidation occurs. You add oxygen, you form the, so earlier the ester is formed here, this ester group is formed here. Now, you convert this methyl group again to acid. So, oxidation occurs. So, methyl terephthalate. So, oxidation occurs. Then, what you do is you convert this oxidation, this uh, acidic form like you have done earlier, the COOH. Again, you add methanol to it, it forms the both sides, the para position and the, this position, you get a ester group. So, this is called dimethyl terephthalate. Okay? So, you have starting material converting. So, this is oxidation esterification, then again oxidation, again esterification. This is the way you produce DMT, dimethyl terephthalate. So, what is the overall reaction here? The overall reaction is your paraxylene reacting with oxygen and methanol to form dimethyl terephthalate plus water and delta H is minus 1305 kilojoule per mole. So, you should remember these paratolic acid the first step, then uh, what you do is you change uh, the methyl toilet and methyl terephthalate. Methyl terephthalate means you have one position. The terephthalate group is, it means that you have double O, but you are not able to convert the methyl group H. This H get converted to CH3 and get a ester, dimethyl terephthalate. So, let us see the second process now. This is the first process. What is the second process? The amoco process. The amoco process it includes extremely reactive radical such as bromine atoms. Now, this bromine atoms what they will do? It will react the sodium bromide that is in the form of bromine atom will react with acetic acid and oxygen. With this a bromine atom radical is created and this bromine atom radical will attack the paratolic acid. So, it means the first step is same the first step conversion of paradoxylene to paradoxylic acid is same. After this paradoxylic acid, you are adding this bromide solution. So, once it attacks the bromine to the paradoxylic acid, the reactions then proceed similar to the oxidation of paradoxylene leading to the synthesis of TPA. Now, instead of dimethyl terephthalate, you will get acid, paradoxylic acid. So, it means whatever I discussed in the previous slide, exactly the same reaction set occurs. So, commercially this procedure is based, the trend in polymerization process mainly what the issue is because I told you acid is much more economical, even though it is ester is much more pure in the monomer, but the trend in polymerization process is to employ the manufacture of TPA rather than DMT. So, 95 percent of the combined production of TPA and DMT is currently TPA manufacturing. Okay. So, most of the polymers which are produced are of starting materials TPA. So, moving ahead, so this is the overall reaction for terephthalic acid. So, you have para xylene getting oxidized. So, all the sodium bromide and this attack with acetic acid are not written here. So, this is the overall reaction. The overall reaction it comes terephthalic acid. So, this is the delta H reaction. So, this amoco technique is very useful technique. It directly creates polymer grade TPA by oxidizing para xylene. You should keep in mind the reaction sequence that is very important. You should remember the reaction sequence that is you remember in this way oxidation, esterification, oxidation and again esterification. Okay? So, this is the written process. Let us see first the written process that is the manufacture of DMT. Now, if you see we have two parts of this entire flow sheet. One is the oxidation reactor here and the esterification reactor here. These are the two things. So, first what happens is there are two reactors one for oxidation and the other for esterification. This is the core of the process. The oxidation reactor is fed with new and recycled para xylene. So, this is fed with new and recycled para xylene, recycled paramethyl toilet and a catalyst. 
Okay. So, it means this system which is coming here consists both paraxylene and paramethyl toilet in the recycle, fresh paraxylene, then the catalyst, the cobalt based catalyst. Okay. This all these are mixed in a reactor. The catalyst here is cobalt naphthenate, which is mixed by the upward movement of reactor. So, here air is sent from the down from the downside of the reactor. Uh, the reaction takes place here, the products are formed here and these are the condition 430 Kelvin and 6 bar pressure. What, what happens the next step? In the next step, both paraxylene and paramethyl toluate are oxidized in this reactor. So, now remember uh, there was sequence, right? So, you have uh, initially paraxylene, then paratolic acid, then paratolic acid, you have paramethyl toluate, then again paramethyl Terephthalate. So both paraxylene. So if you if you notice paraxylene, if I want to write down here the required sequence, paraxylene goes to paratolic which goes to paramethyl toluate. then it goes to paramethyl terephthalate and finally paramethyl terephthalate goes to DMT okay so it will be only methyl terephthalate not para so now you see this uh, see this paratolic acid and paramethyl toluate this paramethyl toluate and paraxylene. See from here to here oxidation takes place and from here to here also oxidation takes place. So, both this process this to this if I write down with a dotted line dotted one this to this both this process conversion takes place in the oxidation reactor okay? and the remaining two reactions that is this one and this one takes place in this reaction the esterification reactor. So, it means in this reactor these two are formed and it is oxidized. The temperature is increased because it is an exothermic reaction. If the temperature increases, the temperature of the reactor is regulated by the evaporation and condensation of the water that is produced. So, if you see, so you have the products effluent coming up, it is steam is generated from here and the phase separator is there. What you do is send out the remaining of gases out. So, off gases means you may have nitrogen, then uh, hydrogen, then carbon dioxide, all this, and the remaining is wastewater. So, you remove this. Okay. The products of the oxidation reactor is heated and fed to the esterification reactor, which is then sparsed with excess methanol that has evaporated. Now, what you do, the remaining products which is coming here will be the mixture of all the intermediates, you send it to the esterification reactor. So, here you need to form both paramethyl toluate as well as the final product that is dimethyl terephthalate. Okay. So, now the products of this is said heated and sent this is heated in with the steam and it is fed to the esterification reactor which is then sparged with excess methanol. So, you require methanol in the second step fine you require methanol for the esterification. So, you are providing here ethanol, but instead of only methanol what you do in this process initially you have methanol which is coming out from the esterification reactor you separate the water and methanol in this distillation column so water here comes out it goes here the methanol is again recycled it comes down here and it's sent and mixed with fresh methanol so the conditions for the esterification reactor is 520 kelvin and 25 bar fine so then it goes to the flash vessel and in the flash vessel Again what you do, you take out the methanol, the remaining any methanol is there, you take out those methanol. You take out this methanol and send it to the recycle feed. So in this as I told you the both the paratolic acid converts into the respective esters, paratolic acid and methyl terephthalate, paratolic will convert to paratolate, naphthenate, terephthalate, paratolate and methyl terephthalate will convert to dimethyl terephthalate it will undergo uncatalyzed. So, you do not require a catalyst here in this particular esterification reactor into their respective esters. So, after condensing vapors in the atmosphere, methanol is separated from water and reused. So, that is what I have said. This is the methanol recycle 
system. So methanol comes here, it goes here, it goes back and is passed into the esterization reactor. So remember here you are having some catalyst which is cobalt naphthenate. Here you do not have any catalyst, it is an uncatalyzed reaction. Esterification is uncatalyzed while oxidation is catalyzed. Okay? So this is you should remember. The liquid product is flashed to eliminate any methanol and water remain. So this is the flash vehicle. So here you are flashing. So flashing means what? You are having a low pressure, you are sending into a high pressure. So it flashes. Flashes means the products of the esterification are then delivered. So what happens? It is delivered to a set of distillation column. Okay. So once it sets up the distillation column, then it is nothing but only the separation of DMT from the other residue. So Paraxylene and paramethyl toluate are reintroduced to the oxidation reactor after being collected from the top of the DMT column. So from this you have the those which have not unreacted paraxylene and paramethyl toluate because esterification is complete because it is uncatalyzed reaction. Some may live that is the unoxidized, unoxidized product may be there this paraxylene paramethyl toluate. You do not uh, recycle the ester, you recycle the initial product, the unoxidized product is paraxylene and paramethyl toluate so as to convert them to the respective acid. So they are then fed back to the oxidation reactor, see it is coming out here. So the bottom product is heavier, the ester, after remove the heavy byproducts, the crude DMT is purified by crystallization. So the, in this particular distillation column, you do a crystallization. So you remove the residue and then send this DMT to crystallization. So with the appropriate temperature and pressure condition, you can take out DMT and use it for further application. So next process is the AMOCO process flow sheet. AMOCO process flow sheet as I told you, uh, it is the use and production of the TPA, terephthalic acid. So the process is similar, only thing is here what you see the in the oxidation reactor, you have an oxidation reactor but no esterification, so, so there, here is no esterification happening. So in the oxidation reactor, paraxylene, acetic acid and catalyst, what is the catalyst? Cobalt acetate enhanced by bromine, okay, they are introduced. By injecting air from the bottom, the reaction liquid is stirred. Extra air is supplied to optimize paraxylene conversion. Okay. So, you have catalyst here, you have acetic acid here. So, why is acetic acid used? Acetic acid may be used to dissolve this catalyst. So, it is a good soluble in this catalyst. So, you will use it and conduct the entire experiment in the um, entire uh, process in the liquid phase. So, you have this pressure and temperature conditions here. So, you have the oxidation happening. The reaction occurs with acetic acid as the catalytic solvent, just now I repeated. The generated heat is dissipated through the evaporation of a portion of solvent. Thereafter, the condensation and reflux to the reactor is takes place. The generated steam can be utilized in the plant's distillation process. So if you see, you have the initial feed coming in, the paraxylene, acetic acid, air and these things all coming into the oxidation reactor it gets heated up by a steam, it goes to a phase separator where there is a separation of gas and liquid. What you do is the scrubber is there, you take away the off gases through the introduction of water in the scrubber. Okay. Then you send the remaining unreacted uh, paraxylene or acetic acid back to the reactor. Okay. So only thing is already you will see the TPA crystals have started forming in this oxidation reactor. TPA will be starting forming in the oxidation reactor. So it means when you are taking these products from this oxidation reactor, you should be careful so that you do not have to pump this stream. Pumping is a problem here. So it is always you should keep something, something which will be down downside or it should flow downwards. That is why the surge vessel is talked about. But prior to that, let us see what happens. What does the scrubber do? Let me again repeat. A scrubber extracts acetic acid from exhaust fumes. So what are the exhaust fumes? In our case, it is nitrogen, unused oxygen and carbon dioxide resulting from over oxidation. So if you have a over oxidation, 
you may have the production of nitrogen and use oxygen carbon dioxide. So, you cannot throw it off the gas and liquid this, this phase separator separates. So, after it is scrapped by water you allow the off gases to pass through and the remaining gases primarily the unused oxygen is allowed to enter again back to the oxidation reactor. Now, please focus on this particular reactor condition due to its low solubility in acetic acid. The TPA is having very low solubility in acetic acid. So, it is a it is a solid liquid mixture. So, solid is here the TPA and liquid is here the acetic acid and catalyst. So, if you see it is the solubility is only a 0.13 grams per kg at ambient temperature and just 15 grams it increases per kg at 470 Kelvin. So, the majority of the terephthalic acid crystallizes during the formation of in this oxidation reactor. So, everything gets oxidized. Okay? So, this is the problem. So, in the same reactor you are having reaction as well as you are having products. So, the remaining part is the recovery part. So, if you leave out the reactor remaining all the units are all recovery and finally purification. So, in the amoco process what you do is the slurry is evaporated. So, now the slurry is evaporated as I told you the slurry is evaporated from the evacuated from the reactor water and transferred to a surge vehicle surge vessel which works at a lower pressure. So, this height is also lower and its pressure is also lower. So, it means the condition is suitable and more TPA than crystallization. So, okay. so earlier it was TPA crystallization taking place because of this condition lower pressure more TPA is crystallizing. After filtering the suspension the crude TPA is dried and transported for purification. So, what happens from the surge vessel you cool it down and send it to a filter you take out the unwanted products, dry it, it becomes crude telepathic, telepathic acid for purification. In these two distillation column what you do is the remaining when you do a filtration acetic acid will be there, you distill them, some part there will be some residue unwanted product, it has been thrown out and the remaining part will be water which is again thrown out. But the acetic acid and catalyst you will not allow to go out of this system. So, what you will do? You will take this both this catalyst and the acetic acid here, you take this and again recycle back to the reactor. So, this completes the entire process which is called the AMOCO process flow sheet. So, purity of the terephthalic acid is a very important thing which I have to mention here. The purity of crude TPA is greater than 99 weight percent. So, this TPA which has been formed here the technical grade TPA we call it is 99 weight percent. The contaminant the most common contaminant is 4 formyl benzoic acid okay? also known as 4 carboxy benzaldehyde or 4 CBA. The problem is it co crystallizes with TPA and it is an intermediary in the oxidation process. So, it blocks the catalyst because and also it co crystallizes with the TPA. So, you have to remove it. So, in the this problem is in the synthesis of PET, when PET is formed you have this 4 CBA, 4 CBA will terminate the esterification chain. So, it will not allow the polyethylene terephthalate to form the polymer chain. So, it has to be removed from TPA prior to polymerization because another point is it, this 4 CBA discolors the polymers which is an additional reason to eliminate it. Okay? So, what you do is you take a fixed bed reactor, in the fixed bed reactor a selective catalytic hydrogenation takes place. So, what you will do it will hydrogenate this CBA to the respective products and it will minimize the concentration of 4 CBA. So, how it is done in this method coarse TPA is mixed with water and heated until it is complete dissolved. So, this TPA you heat it in water and mixes and dissolve it. A palladium catalyst then used. So, in the fixed bed reactor means you use the palladium catalyst to convert 4 CBA to paratolic acid. So, you have to convert this to paratolic acid. If you convert this CBA to paratolic acid then the reaction will proceed in exactly the same manner as DMT. So, solubility of paratolic acid is greater than that of 4 CBA. This is important. If the solubility is greater than that of CBA and so, obviously, it is a desired product and further this paratolic acid does not co-crystallize this TPA. 
So, this is the way you can get rid of this 4 CBA so that a palladium catalyst is used to convert 4 CBA to paratolic acid. Let us compare both the processes. See, the process conditions in amoco are extremely corrosive. Why? Because you have an acid here, the acetic acid and the bromine both. In the reactor and other aspects of the process, the oxidation reactor, you we have to use specific materials such as hesteloid C or titanium. Nearly all newly constructed plants utilize the amoco technology for the synthesis of polymer grade TPA because it has an extremely high yield in a, achieved in a single reactor pass and a low solvent loss. So, the amount of solvent which is the acidic acid it is not lost and further a high yield only a single pass gives 95 percent yield. So, that is why this TPA is highly favorable. Polymerization from TPA has various advantages. Thus, we can see this polymerization from TPA has several advantages over polymerization from DMT. Only advantage of the Witten process, the only advantage of the Witten process is it does not have any acid, it is only alcohol, is that no costly construction materials are required. So, as no extremely potent oxidants, because bromine is not used here, unlike amoco, it only used the methanol for the oxidation and esterification. So, you can use this process which does not require this um, you know this high construction materials or low corrosive materials. So, that is why uh, this is one advantage of the Witten process as compared to amoco. So, I will conclude here. So, in this process you can go through this textbook which has these flow sheets which I have discussed and also go through this particular article which is the chemical reviews which actually discusses the paratolin TPA process, the TPA process in detail. So, you sh this is I think probably it is freely available, you can go to this link and uh, then uh, all the process that is terephthalic acid, dimethyl terephthal and isothalic acid production can be found from this Ullmann's Encyclopedia of Industrial Chemistry. So, this is also available online, but I am I do not know whether you can access it or not, but the second article in all possibility it is having open access. So, you can go through it and uh, see more about the reaction mechanism in the amoco process. Okay? Thank you. Thank you.